Well, as I think Oleg News is exhausted about the financial markets and, say, silver and some of the things that are happening in the equities, uh, there's always new things that just come about. And I'm going to tell you some new things that are coming out, actually, for the financial outlook as we're looking over our shoulder and trying to see, you know, what's coming down the road here. So, um, well, first off, let me just say this, you know, just be calm, be cool. Everything is attitude. Um, there's always a self, if you have a self-defeating attitude, a lot of times people have been hammered so much in the middle class and been hammered so much in life that if you have a defeatist attitude, you're definitely going to lose. And, uh, maybe I can comment a little more on that. Um, I'm going to actually comment more on that in a separate video because it's a subject that's worth dealing with separately. Uh, cause I wind up going too long on these videos because I incorporate a lot of different aspects and things. And, uh, you know, I want people to actually get the whole mosaic of what's going on. But attitude is everything. Just remember that. I know there's people out there that like doom and gloom. I'll give you some doom and gloom because I know it's almost like the, the murder mystery story, the horror story. Ah, what's coming up next? Ah, you know, I know, I know. And actually, people want to know what's going on, too, even if they're not taking it serious or not. But, you know, some people just live for doom, right? You know, like a, a thriller. But it's various, you know. But just remember, your attitude, whether you like doom and gloom or you're worried about doom and gloom, your attitude is everything. If you have a can-do attitude, even if you can't get through everything perfectly, you're not going to always win, you will, you know, do better. You'll do better than, you know, you won't fail as bad even or something, you know. Don't be freaking, like, thinking everything's so impossible because we've been in a worse situation before. Now, first off, I want to give you a bright note. A bright note is... Actually, that gold production has peaked, and it looks like the gold production uh, is not going to be able to keep up with demand for the coming uh, the coming year, which means that gold is going to have to go up. I mean, you know, they, they can argue all they want about, you know, gold is some antiquated, uh, you know, monetary system. Well, let's forget about monetary system. Let's just think of it as an asset class that some people use as a safe haven during times of turmoil. And, yes, we're coming into times of turmoil. Now, I know now everybody agrees about, you know, you know, why things are happening different ways, just like Femin doesn't agree with runway models, okay? I mean, you know, everybody has their divergent opinions on things. But I'm going to give you some of the stuff, actually. A lot of it's actually from the major media. Um, you know, I kind of peruse a lot of what's going on in the alternative media. But, you know, they're... They're, they're just, you know, they've been beating to death the same old song forever, you know. Uh, you know, actually, if I was going to beat to death the same old song forever, I'd say beer, beer, more beer, and endless beer. I mean, say, you know, forget about this, all this other doom and gloom stuff. So if we got more beer, we're not going to worry about nothing. So anyway, the bright note is that, you know, gold production has peaked. That's a fact. That's not something that's coming out of, like, you know, Joe Blow bloggers, conspiracy blog or something. It's a fact, okay? Uh, it's actually, a, you know, a major media story. I'm not going to actually give you the exact where I got it from because maybe it'll get all pissed off or something. I don't know. You know, just yo yo's are. But uh, the other thing is, uh, and this is really what I want to actually say, emphasize that markets are getting really ready to implode. You know, the last time we had the implosion in the markets was due to the real estate bubble. And, you know, what happened, why there was such a hot you know, ticket going in there because of low interest rates and stuff, why that market was so high or whatever, so hot. And, you know, what happened before that in 2000 was the tech bubble, right? Fine, right? Then we had 1987. But, you know, this last time, I know the equities have gotten heated up a lot because of Fed, Federal Reserve policies, right? Federal Reserve policies, you know, with Janet, even with Janet Yellen, this is Janet Yellen in her earlier days, by the way. She used to ride a motorcycle. Yeah, really. Just kidding. But, yeah, uh, anyway, so, you know, they've been stimulating the economy, but only stimulating the economy in the two bigs to fail. So the inflation has happened in the large asset in classes. Like, when I use this word inflation, I'm not talking about your everyday inflation. Yes, I know there's some food inflation. There's, that's definitely going on. But it has not re came up, come about in a consumer price index primarily. It really came about, inflation came out in asset large asset classes especially investment grade asset classes like prime real estate um 
even like the classic cars and motorcycles I talk about on these videos sometimes, even those went up a lot in value because something's original, you know, it's this much, this much, and blah, blah, blah. It's a, you know, it's a Picasso painting, you know, because it's whatever. You can talk to hunting Har Har Harleys for that, about that stuff. And, you know, the, um, the thing is that, you know, the, the, these asset classes have moved up, and the biggest one was the equities in general. The equities, I've said this before, I guess i got to say it again because there's always new people coming on board. Like, the equities moved up over twice. You know, now, now they went down recently. I know they went down 10, over 10% recently. But, I mean, they went up over twice since the crash, the bottom of March 2009. And normally, equities only follow within three percentage points, uh, a few percentage points of the GDP growth and the um, inflation index. Inflation, you know, consumer price index. Well, that didn't happen because when they're stimulating the economy, they're pumping up all the too bigs to fail, and they were reinvesting that money into the equities. That's why there was a bubble there, and that's why nobody else got the money in wage wages, and and that's why the prices didn't go up in the consumer price index because all the money went into the top big guys. Okay, put it simply. But here's where the big guys are getting going to get screwed. And you're thinking, oh boy, but that's not good for us either. <laughs> um, the big, just like the big banks got, got well, not just all the big banks, but also the pension funds and everybody else, uh, got hold, got holding the bag with, some of the big banks got holding, got holding the bag when the um, uh, real estate market collapsed because of all the speculation. Well, what's been the big speculation in the last several years? Now, I'm talking several years, not the last two years, the last year, last several years, the, was the shale oil industry and fracking oil industry in the United States, right? Everyone was like, yay, we're going to make all this money, you know, oil's never going to go below $85 a barrel, blah, blah, blah. So they got all these junk bonds out there, and guess who's holding the bag? Not every big bank is going to get shafted, but some of them are, just like happened in 2008, 2009, right? Same type of deal. So these oil loans or these oil bonds are getting ready to implode. That is really, and you know, that's also a large part of the uh, S&P. It's almost, you know, oil industry and all its related corollary industries is part of the S&P. This is all related to the commodities, all related to silver, and, you know, it has a lot to do with why silver prices are depressed right now. But that has a lot to do with why it's going to turn around. Because too low oil prices always lead to too high oil prices. Because it's not like, you know, uh, a shortage of hairdressers or something like that. Uh, you know, say, for instance, you know, there's not enough hairdressers out there to style hair or something. Well, you can train a bunch of them real fast, you know. Well, with oil... Uh, you just can't turn the spigot back on. And right now, most of the oil is coming from uh, Saudi, and now it's coming on with Iran because of the you know the um, you know the nuclear deal that was done with Iran. And you know, I could tell you one thing: you know, the Shiites and Sunnis they don't get along. It's not they're not kissing cousins like this type of stuff over here. It's not that type of deal. There's actually a lot more tensions on going on now than ever, and. Even though Saudi has a very big military, this is pertains to the, for the future. Why not only is silver and gold going to go up, but oil is going to go up to some unheard of price. Um, the thing is, uh, Saudi does not, even though they got a very strong military, they got you know all these F-16 fighters and all that kind of stuff, and they got all American equipment, they have a huge G expenditure on GDP. Their army is not experienced like Iran's army in hardcore battle. Big difference. And Iran has a lot more population and even have, you know, a local, you know, in-house arms industry. I think the elite have been setting up Saudi all along to freaking get the big whammy. That's what I think is going on. That's why there's the Iran deal. They're going to allow the mutual destruction of the Shiites and the Sunnis and wipe the whole thing off the face of the map. The other thing that's interesting that's also interesting, 
Um, and you know, I think I'm the only one. To make, I don't know what other people are saying. I think I'm the only one putting the pieces together on this. And don't don't expect this to happen in a week, but don't expect it to happen in five years either. Um, the other thing is, they recently passed the law. Congress has recently passed the law that they can export all the oil they want from this country. And you're thinking, why are they doing that when it's like under thirty dollars a barrel now, right? Ooh, why are they doing that? They're getting ready for the future. So, in other words, all these people that put all the capital expenditures, all the sweat equity into getting all the fracking industry done, they're going broke. Uh, they're, they're going bankrupt. They're going belly up. And guess who's moving in to buy them up? The big guys in Wall Street. And you know what's going to happen when the powder keg goes off in the Middle East? Because, you know, Iran probably has nuclear weapons. Saudi's probably got nuclear weapons. You know, they're not kissing cousins. The whole thing's going to go up. That's where most of the oil is coming from. And guess what's going to happen to the price of oil globally? It's going to go through the roof, and they're going to be exporting it out of the United States. So if the middle class can't afford it over here, they'll export it to China or someplace else. Actually, Saudi is getting such big trouble right now. Uh, they got problems in the kingdom. The, the king's resigning. The, the sun's taking over. They're burning through their cash reserves faster and faster. Um, and, you know, b- between Saudi and now Iran, that's where most of the oil gl- is coming from. That could disappear overnight. Just like that. Boom, done. So it's there's a lot of stuff going on. Now, actually, I'm going to tell you something else interesting about what's going to go on with Saudi. They're buying up a lot of our farmland in uh, California and Arizona. You know why? Because they figure it's going to be worth a lot. Uh, money in the agricultural area, and they want to diversify their investments. So it's almost like, you know, you see all this stuff going on out west where, you know, most of the land is owned by the BLM, but hey, if somebody's got the money to come in there and buy rent or whatever the hell it is, lease, no problem. They don't give a shit about the American people. That's a fact, you know what I mean? Um, But that also pretends a lot of what the doom and gloomers have been saying all along about extremely high oil prices, extremely high food prices, you know, extremely high silver prices, that's the good side, and extremely high gold prices, which is the good side. That's why you have this stuff, because when they when they all, they will all move up generally together. I know sometimes one will outpace the other one, but they all move up generally together. Now, um, it's a matter of which one is hot or not, just like old girl here, you know, is it what's is this hot or not? You know, it's almost like the commodities. You know, when it's hot, it's hot. And when it's not, it's not. That's really how the commodities are. The commodities, when they go up, they go up like a hockey stick. They're like, they're on fire, right? And, you know, it's not the type of investment for most people for that reason. Psychologically, it's one of the toughest things to hold. And, you know, it's like if you don't buy it, if you don't jump in and get it, you know, I mean, I know it was at 48 and 49, and then it jumped down to below 26, and you're thinking, well, it's below half, it's like below, it's like 24 or something. Well, is that a good time to come in? More reasonable person would think so. I thought so, too. And it's now it's down to like, you know, it's below that, way below that. But, you know, you know, you can keep betting and betting and betting that it's going to go to $8, and, you know, the people that are on extreme where it's, they're guessing it's going to go too low and they're waiting for the last minute, they're going to miss out, too. I mean, even if you got in at 20, low 20s, you're going to do great. That's what I think. So, what I think, though, is all this is coming out to fruition, like was said. And the next, the real reason, we have not seen a real big implosion in the markets yet. I know people like Harry Dent and all these other people, and uh, with Schiff, Schiff is another one, um, you know, talking about, and, you know, all these things are going to happen, blah, blah, blah. They've been telling you this every day, and then every once in a while they're going to be right. But, you know, I'm going to say right now, the reason they're going to be right right now is because, you know, the ugly head is showing, you know, Hillary, Hill the Beast. <laughs> the ugly head is showing of what's really going on behind the scenes, and that is that the oil market got totally wiped out due to Saudi pumping out all this oil, and now Iran's going to be pumping out all this oil. They, the big banks are holding all these junk bonds and bad debt from the oil industry, from the speculation, akin to almost like what would happen in a real estate market back in the 2000s, you know, from 2000 to 2007. And 
even a lot of the two bigs to fail are, are going to be playing musical chairs. Some of them are going to get wiped out, but some of them aren't. Some of them are going to do very well. But that's going to, that pretends for the future that the equities are going to get slammed. It's not even just about the real estate sector, uh, the real retail sector being bad. It's not, it's not even just about that. The equities are going to get slammed. And, you know, even the uh, French uh, president, whatever his name is, he was saying, uh, uh, he was saying that there's there's a, there's already a state of economic emergency going on, and he wants to do, redefine the economic model. Which means when there's all that type of fear, and also I just told you earlier on, if you, if you don't remember, that gold is actually peaked out, and they're not going to be able to keep up with demand. Its gold production is already peaked. That's going to tell me, you know, fear plus a lack of that stuff you know, peak production has already peaked, means that there's going to be a price increase in gold. And I think the powder keg is being set already for Saudi and Iran to go at it. I think that's why Obama's... See, Obama doesn't make policy by himself. I think the elite are behind him for a reason and why he's allowed to... why he's pursuing this, um, you know, kid gloves Iran policy. Why is he doing this? I think it's because... They're just setting up the Middle East to just like like they did uh, with um, the Iraq Iran war with Saudi uh, Saddam Hussein. You know that's what I think they're doing. They're pulling the rug out from underneath the Saudis. The Saudis are actually getting their ass kicked in Yemen and you know every place that they're running proxy wars, they're getting their ass kicked and they're burning through their cash reserves like crazy. You know, so I think they're just throwing them to the wolves. But then again, you know, our elite don't always have everything freaking figured out all the way. I can tell you that right now. Uh, they think they do. <laughs> they don't. They don't. Now, you know, I just want you to keep what I said, a lot of these little, this mosaic of facts that I told you in mind about the price of silver. It does look rosy for the price of silver for these reasons. Because... You know, I always maintain that when they have a major conflict in the Middle East, that oil will definitely go up, gold will definitely go up, and that's when silver is going to take off like a rocket. It just looks like they already laid the groundwork for that to happen. And that's why I think, you know, Obama's made this uh, this Iranian deal, because they're setting up Saudi, and, you know, our peop the, the government over here, the Congress, you know, for some reason, it's people were lobbied to... Uh, Oh, you can export ga uh, gas and oil products now from the United States before they weren't allowed to do that because of uh, what happened in the 1973 uh, OPEC embargo or whatever it was, right? You wouldn't, you know, we had those uh, gas lines and all that type of stuff. They passed laws where you, you, most products, petroleum products, could not be exported. So why are they passing law now where everything could be exported when the oil industry is doing terrible you see what I'm saying? In other words, they brought this stuff down to bankrupt everybody so they could buy them up cheap. They get they put the laws in place so they can export everything and again, and they bought them up cheap. And now, just you know, the powder keg is going to be getting all set up in the Middle East. When that goes off, all the oil that's over here in the United States is going to be worth like you know, eight times more than it is today. That's what I think is happening. But, you know, the situation is like, it's never really that different. I mean, you know, everything just, you know, I think the real thing that key to freaking getting over all this stuff is, uh, you know, the inter, inter, interchanges between estrogen and testosterone, testosterone. Because it's like, you know, if you go in old school... And you got a good attitude, and you're not getting brainwashed by all the bullshit propaganda that's out there from the major media, you know, how to trying to make men women and women men and all this kind of garbage and just go old school. Uh, you'll get by. You'll get by fine. That's what I think, I know, honestly. And um, tomorrow, I want you, oh, yeah, today is Martin Luther King Day, but tomorrow is also, uh, you know, another bright note. Tomorrow is Robert E. Lee's birthday, January 19th, so. That's another cause for celebration. We don't get a national holiday for it, but I think I'd, you know, celebrate his birthday or something. But anyway, that would be kind of cool. I um, figured I'd throw that in there because that's an, a different twist that 
the the politically correct <laughs> on other silver channels will not throw in. <laughs> I'll throw it in. Uh, not you know. So I figured, wait, hey, we got two holidays instead of one, right? Why not, right? Should be a, a 96 hours off for, for Monday and Tuesday, uh, Martin Luther King Day and Robert E. Lee Day, which um, you know both find uh, American people. So anyway, so let me put it this way: I think that um, you know the situation with silver is actually probably looking to turn around. I don't like saying it too much because I like saying it to keep people's hope up because I know it's psychologically metals are very difficult to hold. Any type of commodities are psychologically are very difficult to hold. Um, the prices are very, very unpredictable. Um, no matter what you think you know, because I know people sometimes forecast too high, some people forecast too low. Some, I mean, there's people that were forecasting $100 silver, now there's people forecasting, you know, other people on the other side of the equation saying it's $8 silver, and I don't know about that. That's a hell of a freaking jump downward. Um, I think that oil probably has already hit bottom, or around bottom, because of tensions that are becoming obvious between um, Saudi and Iran, and actually, if there was a major conflict, um, Iran's not going under unless Israel gets involved. If it's just between Saudi and Iran, uh, Iran's not going under. No way in hell. Um, they probably will eventually, maybe, if Russia gets involved, or I don't know what. You know, I think Russia even has a financial interest, interest of knocking off Iran's oil supply because they're competition, because it'll make their oil worth that much more. So, you know, the situation actually is uh, uh, pretty unique for our time of history, and it could very much punish the middle class. But then again, I want to tell you, though, like you see on my channel, there is not a specific emphasis only on shiny silver coins or shiny metal, precious metals or anything like that. I know that's part of your, you know, your strategy to survive and thrive. But, you know, it's hands-on doing things, hands-on practical things, and going old school. And number one, health. Health. You know, I'd rather not, I'd rather be healthy and not have the money of George Soros. And I can tell you that right now because <laughs> I would not trade places with that guy and I would not trade places with Warren Buffett for nothing. I don't give a shit if they gave me all their money. I would not trade places with those guys physically, you know what I mean? <laughs> like jumping into their bodies and they jumped into my body. I would not do that in a million years. I can tell you that right now. No way. I don't give a shit how much money I got. So, um, you know, so the emphasis on this channel is a lot about, you know, health, feeling good, having a bright, positive attitude, knowing how to do things on a cheap, practical stuff, and, you know, just knowing how to do things on your own independent self-reliance. And, you know, that goes along with silver because in silver, you know, you want to be self-reliant. You don't want to rely on big financial institutions and suits. And even though all the suits aren't bad people necessarily, if there's a major financial crisis, they're not going to be able to help you. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're going to say, well, it's out of my hands. What can I do? Well, you know, I mean, it's not like maybe, they, maybe they'll care. Maybe they'll feel sympathy for you. But they got no control beyond, you know, whatever their little world is. So let me put it to you this way, you know, you got to be reliant and self-reliant in many different ways. So that's why we have a number of different subjects on here. And I'm going to be talking more about um, some of the self-defeatism and stuff like that because I think that's the biggest danger to um, the future. Uh, people who are actually have a bad attitude. Now, I know it is kind of interesting to find the doom and gloom stuff every once in a while, but people have a constant fear, you know, they're constantly freaking, I don't know, that's, that shit's no good. That's no good. Well, maybe that's why they sell a lot of beer in this country, and wine, and spirits, right? You know? People ain't feeling good. They got beer, 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 more beer, endless beer. They have weed, whatever they do. If they're in Colorado, right? So, anyway. You know, they got their escapes. Actually, I don't even drink, to tell you the truth. <laughs> Not at all. I don't need to, man. So, um, but, you know, um, you know, we're a divergent society, and, um, you know, if I had my way, um, I'd probably have one of the feminine uh, campaign managers uh, run against Hillary and divide her vote. <laughs> and uh, you know, make the election more fun, because I can't, I can't take this stuff that serious, to tell you the truth. I mean, I do give you a lot of facts on this channel, 
like I probably give you more facts on this channel than a lot of other people do because I don't think other people that are in alternative media, I don't think they study up what's coming out in the actual financial news as much as I do. And they do not work in areas like I do, like CPA firm with a boutique investment house that's attached to it. They do not work in it. I don't do that full time or nothing, but I could, but I don't, I don't want to. <laughs> I want to do this. This is more fun, man, to tell you the truth. Like, actually, I like going out to the, you know, to tell you the truth, to say on a side note here in the end, I like going out to those classic car shows and stuff, too. You know, I mean, I'm just doing that for fun. I mean, I mean, it's not like there's just gazillion views on them or something like that. Actually, I'm kind of doing this YouTube for fun. If I like doing it, that's, I'm going to keep doing it, and I'll work hard on it. And and actually, if I like doing it and if I'm helping people, um, I will start, you know, doing better. I'll, I'll move up and whatever the hell it is. But that's only if I'm actually truly helping people. That's my emphasis. I try to anyway. I try to. So, you know, but then again, I don't take shit from everybody either. So, you know, that's the other side of it. <laughs> but anyway, um, just just when, when this stuff comes down, I, it is. It's definitely coming down. The markets are coming down really hard. It's not the end of the world, okay? Especially if you got silver and gold. Especially if you know how to do things on your own. Especially if you have a, you know, I mean, I can turn on my heat in my house anytime I want. I got my perfection kerosene heater out here it's like going great i'm like it's like you know this is fun to me i think i, I think maybe my future might be you know um you know a multi multi mansion multi big log cabin mansion on several acres with a couple fireplaces in it you know uh you know wood wood stoves and and uh maybe a model a or ford out front or something and a tractor <laughs> And I'm gonna I'm gonna play the I'm gonna play the game, you know what I mean? I'm gonna play the game because I, I you know, that would be my way of playing the game because my name my my way is, is shrewdness all the way. Do not show people what you got. And if you make a lot of money on silver later on, I should think everybody's gonna make a load of money on silver. Uh watch out for your next next move. Do not get a big ego, do not try to show how much money you got. Stay calm, stay cool, and you know, be frugal and careful, and you will th you'll survive way beyond you know the next silver bubble into your next asset class, and you'll do well. Okay, so that's my update. It's kind of mixed 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 hodgepodge things as usual, but you know I think I do give you uh, an, a good mosaic of what's going on. The Saudis and the, the Saudis and the Iranians look like they're being set up for a war. Um, Iran will not go get defeated by Saudi unless, you know, the U.S. gets involved. I don't think they'll get involved. Unless Israel gets involved, I don't know if they will. Who knows? Um, it just means much, much, much higher oil prices. The um, All the junk bonds in oil are mean that the two bigs to fail in Wall Street are getting some lot of them being holding in holding the bag, just like what happened with, including the middle class pensions and stuff, just like what happened with the real estate uh, boom. You know, the, the shale oil industry boom has now collapsed, and everybody who financed it with, you know, speculative bets, that's all going to come down. It's going to create a big landslide. Uh, gold production has already peaked. Therefore, for the coming, uh, in, you know, for the coming year, uh, with all these tensions and crises and markets coming down and all this scary stuff, you know, people, more people are going to run to gold, and there isn't enough to go around, you know, per like what's going on with the actual supply because production peaks so supply is going to be below demand price should definitely go up so you know and you know these things happen i mean so don't go freaking out about it too much um and uh you know there's always beer <laughs> there's always there's always beer and wine so anyway but don't overdo it anyways there you go over now